Hi, it's Toby from Heavyweight MMA here today with the man, pro fighter, Farjack Jenkins, stand up back as Marsh. The man's got an announcement. Hit us, bro. What's happening? Uh, yeah, good news. Got the, um, you know, got the call for the contender series, which is on the 27th of September. So, um, yeah, I kind of, I, I think last time I spoke to you as well, I kind of accepted my fate that it wasn't going to happen. And I was just fully focused in on that fight with Justin Van Heerden. Um, and then I went around to my coach's house on Sunday and um, he was just sort of showing me around his house. I haven't been there yet. And then he, he pulled up a fight and he goes, he goes oh, I was just doing some fire research. This guy just got signed to contenders. And we we're watching the fight. I go, oh, who's he fighting? And he goes, oh, just some nobody. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck, that's disappointing. And then we got to the end of it and I'm like, fuck, oh, that's a, that would be a good fight for me. Like, I like that fight. And he goes, Oh, well, congrats, mate. The UFC called this morning. You're, you're in. And I was like, fuck. So it's pretty emotional, like the first little bit there. But I sort of had like an hour or so, of like just bringing my family and close friends and letting everyone know. And then after that, I've just like completely switched. Like now I've, I had to get you to send me the link here on my iPad because I've just left my phone at home. Like my phone's just been nonstop for the whole day. And it's like, it's nice. It's nice that people are reaching out, but from my perspective, when people are saying like, congrats, mate, like, well done. I'm like, well done on what? Like, I haven't done anything yet. And like, I I understand what they're saying. And I do, like, I can logically look at it and see it is like, you know, a recognition of, you know, that I've come this far to get the call. But it's like, it means fuck all if you don't do anything with it. So I'm like, people are saying congrats. And I'm like, fuck off. Don't tell me congrats. I've still got shit to do. Like, but yeah, not, I'm, I'm not saying that I, I am appreciative of all the support, but it's just, I'm, I'm switched into that mindset where it's like, nah, I've got, I've got work to do. That's a, it's a way to be, man. I, you, I saw your post, you wrote foot in the door, no more, no less. Now it's time to go and kick the door in or something to that extent. It makes sense, man, because, you know, like you said, it's just one step up. It's not, you haven't achieved the ultimate goal that you have, but it's a step towards achieving your goal. It's a very positive thing. And, and it, it must be very exciting for you, man. Sitting on the bench for three months, waiting for yeah. something. It wasn't coming. And then suddenly it hits you in the face, bro. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it was just like, even, even, um, you know, my parents and my girlfriend and like everyone around me just kept saying like, Hey, like, just be patient. It'll come, you know, you're doing the right things. You're training, you, your diet's good. Like you, just keep at it and I was like ah oh, fuck fuck this whatever and then when it came it, it's it's good now that that I was you know stayed on track because because I'm in a really good position to go and make a good show of it yeah it's it's actually good timing it's also good for Justin he still gets to have a shot at the title but let's go back to your opponent man Ecuador breathes tough people you know Marlon Chido Veritas had an amazing performance from the same country he'll be yep. writing those sort of coattails wanting to perform and wanting to jump in and uh, probably emulate emulate Chido Vera man he's a he's got a good record eight wins one loss only due to doctor's stoppage looks like he's got a strong chin a big heart uh what do you take from the man when you watch that bit of footage yeah 100 percent. like I I watch him he's, he's you know got good boxing I don't think he's he brings anything that I haven't seen before you know on a level like in terms of toughness and stuff like look at Rod like Rod took punishment for five rounds and I was never deterred from giving him that punishment you know if you look at it and you go, fuck, you're going to punish him, but he's going to be there at the end of three rounds. It's like, yeah, well, I've, I've given out punishment at a pretty high pace for five rounds. And I, and I don't show signs of slowing down either. So, um, yeah, look, he's, he's going to look at what I do and he's going to go, fuck, here comes the leg kick. So he's going to adjust towards that, you know, which is going to open up his body a little bit more because he'll stand a little bit more square. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to play the first minute out or whatever, see, see, see where his right hand is, see how it goes from there. And then I'll just start opening up with my shit from there. I'm not changing too much offensively or defensively. It's just going to be get the reads early and then start picking him apart. Cause yeah, he puts on a pace and, and he's tough, but I put on a pace as well. And mine's, mine's a lot more layered. I believe like I've got, I've got levels with my fakes, my level changes, all that sort of stuff. Whereas he's more like walk forward and throw. Yeah, agreed, man. All the fights I saw were were kind of brawls, man. And that's where I say he seems like he has a big heart. He's got strengths in striking and grappling. Like he seems like an all-rounder. But I might be biased, man, but I feel like you are highly, more highly skilled than him. I feel like the level of Australian MMA is higher than what he was fighting when you watch the guys he's against. And I think if Definitely. you can play your game and can maintain your composure, maintain your rhythm and fight your fight, I feel like you can take it, man. Obviously, you don't want to be 
uh, lackadaisical about it and think you're winning before you do. But I think you've got a very strong shot at this, bro. Yeah, for sure. And that, that was our whole thing with Rod as well. It was, if you stand in front of Rod and you go, 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 and you, and you empty the gas tank trying to finish him and he doesn't go away, then he comes at you and that's where he's strong, you know, and he'll, he'll keep that pace on you. And it's like, so I understand, I understand that rhythm of not, not emptying the gas tank in the exchanges with him. So I'm not going to, even you watch his most recent fight, the guy stands in front of him and goes, all right, let's throw one, twos at each other and try and clean up with left hooks and see who drops first. Right. And I'm, there's absolutely no way I'll play that game with him. You know, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be cutting angles. I'll be moving away from the power side, changing levels. You know, if I take him down with a little trip or something early on and just get his arms a bit lactic so that when he, when he stands back up, he's, uh, doesn't have those pop in his shots, then yeah, we've got lots of options. That's it, man. And that's just on the the kind of physical fighting side, bro. On the other side, you've also got to contend with. It's a different thing for you, man. You've been fighting locally for a long time. Now you're going to be in Las Vegas. Like that's a big thing as well. So have to think a little bit about that psychological side. How you're going to handle that, right? Yeah, definitely. Like I think, um, you know, Jimmy Crute and I have been training together since we were kids. And um, you know, I gave him a call, and he said, "We'll sit down. We'll talk about it. I'll give you a rundown of like what to expect." And that sort of stuff. And I think that'll be really good for me. Um, but the you can talk all you want about how you're going to handle big pressure situations, but you don't know until you get there. So I'm just going to prepare as best I can, do everything I can on the back end, and then fucking show up when I get there. But, you know, I've been the main event in my head since my fucking first fight. And if you ask anyone who comes to fights when they're on in Melbourne, the crowd is, you know, the crowd is usually 50% or more there for me, right? So in terms of, building up pressure I've, I've put pressure on myself and I've, I've fell into the traps of that before and you know I've come out on the other end and now I feel like I deal with it really well it's a different level when you're at the UFC apex in Vegas and Dana White's there but you know I'm confident I'll be able to handle it bro when you look back you think what you've done you've done what you're doing and and put so much of your life into this because you enjoy it right and uh, you've got certain goals the key to going over there and doing well I think is to also enjoy it you know uh, to be in the moment, enjoy the whole process, enjoy going overseas. A lot of people say that's one of the best parts about fighting that you get to travel around and see things and, you know, experience. Yeah, definitely. So embrace it, bro. Embrace the pressure, embrace the challenge and let's go, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. No, I agree. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Cool. All right, bro. We're very happy to wake up and see these announcements popping up all over the internet, man. And, and congratulations. Yeah, well, we were, we were, we weren't supposed to announce it until Friday or something. That's what we got told. Um, and then I wake up at like 5 a.m. this morning and I'm, my Twitter, I've just got like mentions in these Twitter stuff, all these, all these Spanish ones, like eh, CC, but whatever, they, whatever they were saying. Um, and I was like, what the fuck? I thought we weren't allowed to announce it yet. And I rang my manager and he's like, fuck, they must have leaked. They must have dropped it. And then... I'm sitting there and I said to my manager, can I announce it? And he goes, we'll wait to get the all clear from the UFC. And then all the podcasts in Australia have it. And then all my friends, I've got like 150 messages on Instagram of people sharing it, being like, let's go, Jack. And I'm like, well, fuck, now I've, now I've got to just share it. Like, I don't really have an option. It's already out there. But not, not that it's a big secret or anything, but I was, I was trying to follow, follow the company line, especially early on. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, man. You got to follow the protocols, but now it's out. It's out. Um, yeah, we're gonna be watching, man. It's good to spread the news and get garner some support, anyway, bro. Yeah, definitely. That's it, man. Anyway, uh, we'll all be watching, bro. Now you're not just representing Bacchus Marsh, bro. You're gonna be representing Australia, so we can all pay attention. We can all support now. Uh, all the yeah, people watching you from the Australia side will be watching, and yeah, looking forward to it, eh? Yeah, for sure. It'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. All right, bro. Thanks for sharing, and uh, I'll post this up soon. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Toby. You're welcome.